It was close to half a year since that fateful night when King Von lost his life trying to fight Quando Rondo. The moment Quando's close friend Lil Tim pulled the trigger, he set into motion a chain of events that would change their lives forever, with King Von being one of Chicago Drill's most feared killers, as well as a popular rapper. This meant that Quando Rondo, Lil Tim, and everyone around them would have to defend against wave after wave of assassination attempts, all seemingly connected to the slain Chicago rapper. On April the 16th, 2021, Quando Rondo denied being shot at and told the world that he rides in a bulletproof truck. That same month, Quando's latest concert is announced on May the 1st, 2021 in Waycross, Georgia. After having his previous shows that were scheduled just weeks after Von's death cancelled, Quando was eager to show his fans, ops, and the world at large that he could travel the country and perform without incident. However, unfortunately for Quando, that simply wasn't true. On May the 1st, 2021, Quando Rondo plays the very show that he was booked to perform at in Waycross, Georgia. And here he's seen playing to an empty venue, complaining to the crowd that his shows are usually bigger than this. With Quando addressing the fans and still thanking them for coming out despite the low turnout. I ain't gonna lie. Man, my show is really big, you feel me? Deeper than this, but I know I got a lot of shit going on. You feel me? But I still appreciate everybody who came out. I'm gonna run this bitch out like it's 10,000 people in here. Come on, shit. When these images and clips surfaced, Chicago affiliates of Von and Dirk, like Mimo 600, would mock Quando, saying that he must have made a loss on that show. But as the night went on, that show's turnout would be the least of Quando's worries. As him and his entourage would leave the venue after performing, driving to a Circle K gas station just 11 minutes away in the next town of Blackshear. At around 3.20am after that show, Quando and his team would be in the parking lot of a gas station convenience store in Blackshear, Georgia. Soon after arriving, somebody began to open fire from across the road, with one man allegedly being hit in the hand and ending up in the hospital. Quando Rondo would flee the scene before authorities arrived. According to one report, over 100 bullets were fired at Quando's entourage during this incident. However, members of the public would arrive to the crime scene, beginning to film and posting the footage on social media, with the woman filming, telling viewers that she was on the scene of the Quando shooting and saying that people had heard the gunshots from all the way down the street. And she would even walk right up to bullet markers where the shell casings had apparently been fired from all the way up the street. Oh my God, it is Quando, y'all. It's got to be. They talking about it was the rapper that performed at the Vibe, at the club. They talking about it was Quando. They heard it was, uh, somebody had a bounty on them. I'm like, damn, how the f*** you know? Look at all them bullets. Yeah, they got them picking up bullets. It was unclear who exactly was responsible for the shooting. Quando's ops from Savannah, the gang S8K or the Section 8 Kids, would post seemingly referencing the incident, with a caption saying Get Back Gang, which if you didn't know is actually another name for King Von's gang, along with audio from Lil Durk's song Hellcats and Trackhawks, that earlier song where Dirk says that he's looking to catch somebody lacking at their show. Now it's unclear whether S8K members were taking direct responsibility for the incident, or simply celebrating a hit sent from Lil Durk or Von's crew, Get Back Gang. However, a black disciple from Georgia seemingly claimed responsibility for this hit on social media, leading people to believe once again that this was a hit affiliated with Lil Durk. Naturally, due to his extensive affiliations with the Black Disciples street gang, of which King Von was indeed a prominent member. Lil Pab also tweeted after this incident, brushing off the shooting and telling his ops to enjoy life and not let one person stress them out so much, and going on to post a picture of himself alive and well the following day. Quando would seemingly address the threats against his life in a later interview Interview, also brushing off the danger and saying that he doesn't care about death threats because he's always armed. Death threat all you want to, man, bro. That's, that's just some words, my Do be an action. Right. You feel me? I'm going home to my daughter. Right. And if I didn't, God called me. Right. But so, I'm going home to my daughter, bit, bro. I ain't, I'm not even the type of person to move without a fire. Um. Rumors would later circulate that Lil Tim was also injured in this shooting. Now, whether or not that's true, it was clear that Lil Tim suffered a serious injury being shot numerous times during the altercation with King Von. A couple of months after that shooting at the gas station, in August 2021, Lil Tim would post a sobering picture to Instagram, revealing that due to his gunshot wounds, he's having to use a colostomy bag, but still giving thanks for the fact he's still alive. 
It's unclear whether or not this injury was from the Waycross shooting, the shootout with King Von, or even a previous shootout in Savannah. But regardless, it was clear that Quando and Lil Tim were continuing to pay the price for this beef with King Von. But that didn't stop Quando from continuing to push his career forward. On May the 7th, 2021, Quando releases his sixth mixtape, Still Taking Risks, his first full-length release since the killing of King Von. And this project would be laced with references to the incident, as well as the consequences. Quando would rap about having a million dollar bounty on his head and the opening track Blue Man. He would also mock King Von on tracks like Red Eye, saying that he's smoking a dead guy and catching homicides with Timmy. There's also a line on that track where he says that he's signed to NBA and rapping, if he loves that girl, make sure he never sees her again. Seemingly a reference to King Von essentially dying as a result of his girlfriend Asian Doll creating a love triangle between Von and Youngboy. With Quando going on to disrespect King Von's crew Get Back Gang, saying there ain't no get backs. Quando also says that he has shooters doing murders for only $1,500, and that he wants to kill all of his ops one by one until he gets to the top dog. Perhaps another reference to a desire to take out Lil Durk, as he depicted in his music video for the song Soul Reaper. And Quando even ends this song by mocking Lil Durk for linking up with Youngboy's enemies like Fredo Bang, as well as saying that Lil Tim got out of jail and got straight back to shooting even mocking Von, saying that Timmy busted Von's head because he got caught without his gun. There's also the song Drop Some, where Quando reiterates that he didn't even realize that it was a beef with Von the night he got shot, and saying that he has bullets for a wrestler, another reference to Von trying to fight the night he got killed. Quando also raps saying that his young'un is quick to make a rapper bleed. Elsewhere, on the track Devil On My Shoulder, he shouts out Timmy, saying he will shoot for him. But perhaps most notably was the track Purple Baby, the song where Quando extensively disses his dead enemies from Savannah, repeating a chorus that had lyrics saying that he's smoking purple babies, a reference to the gang's 1100 block and VBS, the Villa Boy Soldiers, who rep purple, and specifically the deceased members Heem and Huncho Reese, who lost their lives amid a deadly beef with the Roland 60s crew, OTM or Only the Mob, aka Jump Out Gang, this crew that Quando and Tim have been representing all of those years. Quando also references the beef with Lil Durk in the hook of this song, saying that this song is for the ones who put money on his head and that they're going to murk them, a suggestion that Quando and his people are trying to take out the people who are putting money on their heads before they get a chance to kill them. That would be followed up with a lyric saying that they're smoking on their new dead homie, which of course is a reference to Von. The track also had lines about jump out gang jumping out and shooting, as well as a lyric attempting to discredit the street reputation of Chicago gangs, with Quando rapping that his ops think that they're the only killers in America. Again, referencing the fight with Von, saying that he's not wrestling, just shooting, and even referencing Lil Reese's earlier Twitter beef with him, saying his ops wanted smoke, until he killed their friend, ultimately ending the song saying all he smokes is dead ops and free Lil Tim. Elsewhere on the song OK, Quando says that the night Von died made him sick, and reflecting on the trauma of seeing his friend Timmy split open after being shot. On the track Still Doing Wrong, he says that they had no choice but to kill Von, but to this day, he still doesn't know what he did to upset him. And then finally, on the track Stand On It, Quando would taunt Lil Durk and the Chicago rappers, who keep saying that they're going to kill him, saying that they better stand on that statement, mocking his rivals and questioning why they think they're the only shooters out here, introducing his team of shooters as Jump Out Gang and saying that they're the ones who put people on the news. Still Taking Risks was a bold project from Quando Rondo that made a big statement. And in spite of the shooting after his concert in Waycross, Quando was still planning on disrespecting his enemies. And Quando wasn't the only one who wasn't scared of the Chicago hitters hellbent on taking them out, because Lil Tim would also share the same sentiment. Quando went live on the 8th of May 2021 with Lil Tim expressing frustration at their ops and saying that they're smoking Purple Baby and other ops, and saying that people are trying to blackball them from the music industry. I can't sleep at night. Many nightmares, they eat me up. Yeah, no real purple babies for real, man. I'm about to start smoking water. Yeah, black babies around this bitch, cuz. You know, I got that's that the house with me, baby. I got a purple baby. I wear no bad Man, I'm pissed off, AJ. You gotta get up. No, boy, they cannot get that little, that big. Straight up, ain't it, bitch, bro? I'm telling you, boy, I ever get, boy, they let me get that big bag. These folks really don't want to in the industry. So now I'm about to come bump rush and do this. Got to kick the dough in. Come on, man. But they act like they don't like me. Yeah, 4th of July this. Quando even says that him and Lil Tim are going to drop a mixtape together. Should have put me on that. That me and Lil Tim about to drop a tape and we ain't about to do no cap. Hey, oh, mother is up, is up, is up.
and it would appear that in the midst of all of the hype surrounding Lil Tim, as he quickly went from unknown street figure to demon slayer who had killed Chicago's most dangerous rapper, he would spot an opportunity to capitalize on it. So Lil Tim would seemingly hit the recording studio too, in an effort to garner more money and fame off of the back of this situation. In June, Lil Tim would be on live previewing his new song, Off The List. I dropped them all. Now, this wasn't Lil Tim's first go at rapping. He had dropped snippets of songs all the way back in September before this whole beef popped off. But now that Lil Tim was known the world over as the man who had killed Chicago's most famous self-proclaimed demon, he might just have a shot at getting famous off the back of this killing, just like King Von got famous, rapping about all the people that he had supposedly killed. As the days went on, Lil Tim got more and more active on social media, seemingly building up the hype for his new rapper slayer rap persona. On June the 9th, 2021, Lil Tim goes live, saying that you know he keeps a black hoodie, and denying being in hiding, saying, look what happened to Von. You know I keep me a black hoodie. Hiding in the woods, what? Why well, I seen that tweet, boy? He hiding in the woods, what? Bitch, I'm in the trenches. What happened to my buddy? Double down on y'all ass, man. Ass, bitch ass. Interestingly, after shooting King Von, Lil Tim didn't tweet for around eight months, with his final tweet posted literally less than an hour before that shootout. But then, on July the 7th, 2021, Lil Tim would return with a brand new Twitter account claiming that this new account was set to be foul and disrespectful, titling himself Lil Tim the biggest op. Lil Tim would swiftly begin liking other posts on Twitter of people saying that they're smoking on Von, as well as reposting a tweet by Quando Rondo seemingly referencing that moment where Quando helped a wounded Lil Tim into the hospital after the shootout with Von. A few days later, Lil Tim would post up on Twitter with his friend saying that if you don't have a homicide, we can't be friends, even attracting him a like and a follow from hip hop's biggest troll, 6 9 Lil Tim proceeded to post clips on social media showing that he was outside in these streets, on the front lines, and not scared of any of his enemies. Come on, man. Front line, oh. <laughs> Too many ugly ass front line. Eventually, on July the 21st, 2021, the full version of Lil Tim's new song, The List, would leak. And this was a wild track, seemingly dissing King Von and taking full responsibility for his murder. With Lil Tim rapping that he just checked a new N word off the list, and that he's quick to gun you down, check the score, bitch, I don't miss. Elsewhere on the track, Lil Tim dared his ops to spin on him, and a music video for the song would release in August, with Lil Tim rapping these lyrics whilst holding a shovel and smoking a blunt. A scenario that to me seems to indicate only one thing, he's smoking on Von and digging his grave. Elsewhere on the song, Lil Tim would rap that he's pulling out a shovel and grave digging all of his friends, as well as rapping that he will kill people and he doesn't care who they are, as well as saying, F that get back, another reference to King Von's crew get back gang, and rapping that his ops all had guns, but they didn't shoot that night. A likely reference to King Von's friends Slutty and Louie, who had attempted and failed to execute Lil Tim on the ground that night the shooting occurred. Following the leaking of Lil Tim's song off the list, blogs and websites would quickly react. This would lead to Lil Tim denying that the song was aimed at Lil Durk or King Von, with him posting an Instagram story reminding everybody that he mentioned no names on the song, as well as claiming to not even be able to officially release the song or video due to somebody sending it to the judge, with this apparently having potential to jeopardize his self-defense argument in court. Now, it's possible that due to this awkward rollout, the song and video being leaked, and then having to cancel the official release, Lil Tim may well have not made any money from this song. But what did happen was he caught the attention of another rapper with common enemies, 6 9 Now, 6 9 has a storied history when it comes to beefing with Chicago rappers. He famously had words with Lil Durk on IG Live during his prime as a rapping blood member. But when I feel like disrespecting me, blood. And he had also gone back and forth extensively with Lil Reese. But since King Von mocked 6 9 for eventually becoming a snitch, when Von died, 6 9 was one of the first people to mock Von and disrespect Lil Durk in the aftermath. Look how happy he is. He sacrificed. Look. Look how happy he is. Look, look at this dead on his shirt. Look. Yo, you think King Von thirsty? I think King Von thirsty. Look. Yo, drink that. Look, if a kill ain't dead, we ain't wearing no RP shirts. With 6ix9ine being one of the biggest people pushing the slide for Von movement. This is essentially a catchphrase taunting Lil Durk and questioning why he hasn't retaliated for the killing of Von. And it's partly the result of a famous King Von lyric 
where he rapped, if he dies, his people will slide to avenge him every day and boost the murder rate. Combine this with lyrics that Lil Durk rapped on Pooh Shiesty's song Back in Blood, where he says, if the killer isn't dead, then you can't wear an R.I.P. shirt. Stephanie, killer ain't dead, we don't wear no R.P. shirt. Yo, Lil Tim's still alive, huh? No 4K trade members, nothing, nothing happened to them. Look, look. Von rest in piss. Clearly 6 9 was looking to capitalise on the death of King Von, all for his own attention. But what he did next truly shocked to the internet. As in August, a clip went round of 6 9 and Lil Tim seemingly arriving to a Savannah music studio together. And the media would soon report that 6 9 and Lil Tim had seemingly teamed up to record a collaboration. 6 9 posted a video of him in Savannah, allegedly rolling his dice with Lil Tim's people. <laughs> And then another video would go around, apparently showing Lil Tim in the booth recording with 6 9 Now, Lil Tim would deny doing a song with 6 9 telling his followers on social media, what do I look like doing a song with a rap? Lil Pab would also cast doubt on the situation, posting the studio footage, pointing out that there is no song to show. And Quando Rondo would also deny the collaboration, after 6 9 posted a video showing him in Savannah and saying he was playing dice with Quando's people, with Quando saying that his people had taken 6 9s money and left the building, indicating that in reality, 6 9 had actually been finessed out of his cash by the 33rd Street goons. After this, Lil Tim would come out to say that it was not 1027 or 33rd Street members in that video with 6 9 essentially saying that 6 9 came there to meet with him, but Tim didn't want to go through with it. Tim would claim he would never do a song with a snitch when he has friends that literally got snitched on. Cause you know, I can, I can have anything, any name of my mouth, cause you don't see me in that video, them yo people in that video, that's your family, cause that's your people, cause you don't see no 1600, you don't see no three. You know, 1027 chains and that. Them yo people and they flashing money with that man. That's not me. <laughs> you tripping. He can't die for me, but I wasn't in there with that. Tim would later do an interview with Fuchsia's TV, claiming to have taken around forty to sixty thousand dollars from Six Nine before leaving the studio without recording. Nah, I never did it. I never did it. I act like I was gonna do it. Gotta got down a little couple of forty, sixty racks type. <laughs> it just did. Like, I ain't never did. I act like I was gonna do it. I never did. So it turned out 6ix9ine had actually planned to include Lil Tim on his King Von disc called Wawa, but when Lil Tim pulled out of the song, 6ix9ine had to re release the track as a solo song under the title Gene. But even without Lil Tim on the track, 6ix9ine's lyrics would be all aimed squarely at Lil Durk for not avenging King Von, with pointed lyrics on the track saying your man got shot and you didn't get back. And in the video, when 6ix9ine rapped the lyric, go get a gun and go get some get back, he even flashes the word slide for Von up on the screen. So in the end, it really did seem like Lil Tim was actually able to translate his street notoriety into cold hard cash. Ironically in this case, without even having to record a song. But behind the scenes, Lil Tim was still recording and practicing his rap skills. After the 6 9 debacle, Quando Rondo and Lil Tim collaboration track called Biggest Op leaks online. But for now, Lil Tim would remain behind the scenes and in the streets rather than pursuing a rap career fully. As time would go by, people would be wondering whether or not this supposed million dollar bounty on Quando's head was even real. In September, a clip circulates apparently showing Quando walking around all by himself in Walmart with no security. Yesterday, um, Quando Rondo, as you all know him as, came to my job. He was by himself. Everybody is making comments saying uh, he's supposed to be on the run. He is living life, as you can see, having fun. And as time goes on, Quando Rondo seemed to just be living his life as normal. The following week, he goes on live and says only his friends can fight him, and if anyone else tries, they're getting shot. As well as saying that Lil Tim and NBA Youngboy are the only people who have been there for him. Me and Black got the hit and, you know, some brotherly <laughs> You know, I fight with him, anybody else throw their hands up, they get in their ass. But then Black like, tell me, but Lil Tim and Lil Tom, I don't give a f about a not like me though. I want it to stay that way. Cause I'm on a true color rock. His ass will end up like that, but I'm talking about eternally. Unfortunately for Quando, Lil Tim's troubles with the law were far from over. Sometime at the end of 2021, Lil Tim gets into a high-speed chase with the cops, eventually getting himself arrested. With NBA Ben 10 saying free Tim and showing that he's saved in his phone as Von Killer. 
Lil Tim would abruptly stop tweeting on September the 18th, 2021, with one of his last tweets saying that he knows people that carry guns just to get caught with it rather than shoot. With Tim later telling Fuchsia's TV that he wasn't driving the car, but he still got charged and spent around a month behind bars as a result. I wasn't even driving though. I was in the car. They stick everything on me because I ain't told them who was driving, so they charged me with it. I did it like a month. With Lil Tim briefly in jail and Quando Rondo out here walking around Walmarts with no security, the trend of asking when somebody is going to slide for Von would continue intensely. On September the 19th, 2021, Oblock member and childhood friend of King Von, Moo Wop, who is currently awaiting trial for the murder of FBG Duck, and who is also the very person who punched Quando Rondo to the ground whilst he was still scuffling with King Von after Lil Tim shot Von on November the 6th, is on Instagram Live getting trolled by fans who asked him right to his face when he's going to slide on Lil Tim. Hey. Hey, don't say no, bro. I'm oh God, oh God, I won't. Oh, listen. All right. <laughs> when y'all go and slide on new Tim, right? Hey, go on here, gang. Then I say, don't say no, man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> hey, I'm on TV control. Hey, out of that, it's over with. I'm out of there. My brother just messed it up for everybody. Eventually, after all of this talk of sliding for Von, the man that everybody was telling to slide, Lil Durk, would finally have enough. It would seem that Durk, unable to keep his beef in the streets, felt compelled to begin rapping about this situation in his music too. On October the 8th, 2021, Lil Durk would rap on the Who Wants Smoke remix with Nardo Wick, saying that people keep trolling him saying slide for Von, but he's already got back, people just don't know it as well as rapping that people die pumping gas, a possible reference to the shooting of Quando at the gas station earlier that year. It seemed that Lil Durk was trying to quash the slide for Von trend by hinting to the world that he had in fact already slid. This song was followed a week later by Lil Durk's new song titled Pissed Me Off, a track where he raps that since he lost Von, he can't be happy until they even the score. And rapping, perhaps self-referentially, that if you're not a shooter, you should at least put up money for the guns, a stolen car, and the bail. Dirk would rap a warning, saying that somebody mentioned his friend on live, but they can't laugh now. Likely another reference to Quando mocking Von's death on IG Live, and suggesting that Quando isn't laughing after the shooting in Georgia. Dirk would go on to mock people in different states for acting like they're from Chicago, a likely reference to how Quando and his goons all posted up with guns on camera following the cancellation of his first show after Von's death. Ultimately, this slide for Von meme was incredibly destructive. Whether or not it contributed to the violence, or simply just baited Lil Durk into incriminating himself and rapping lyrics that could tie him to crimes just to save face, what was clear is that the danger was real, and the supposed million dollars on Quando Rondo's head was far more than just a rap lyric. And from here, sadly, this deadly feud would continue to play out on both the streets and in rap songs, with these murderous, vengeance-themed anthems captivating rap fans all over the world and the billboard charts. If you found that clip interesting, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you want to watch the full length version of this video, check out the documentary on my main channel, Trap Law Ross. And if you want the uncut version of that documentary, then head on over to patreon.com slash trap law Ross, where you can watch all of my best videos completely uncut for just two bucks. And if you want to keep in touch and get updates on the next documentaries that I'm going to be dropping, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Trap Law Ross. Appreciate it. Peace.